Hey everybody, I'm Jordan with pdq.com and I'm here to talk to you about the best practices for our new PowerShell scanner that we have added. Uh, if you're like me, you saw a PowerShell scanner, you instantly just started all of your automation scripts, you started just putting in there because it's just a little bit more on demand. You don't have to worry about the remote access part of it because it's running locally on the machine. It's just, it's just fantastic. But you're probably not always getting the results you're expecting and it's just because there's some best practices to go over that could really help clean this up and I'm going to actually show this in PowerShell instead of in the scanner window, uh, which I'll kind of go over in the last example. Uh, the first thing uh, to go over is oftentimes within a script, you are running a command, in this case I have install package provider NuGet, where it's going to put output out. And that output is going to show up in the scanner as its own row within the scanner. So while that information doesn't do anything for us and what we're ultimately looking for, the information is going to show there. So what you do, is we put a we cast it to null. So it's still going to import the provider that it needs, but you're not going to get the data. And this is going to keep it from cluttering and getting, uh, I mean, I'm sure when you're in your script, you see all the lines of just extra lines that you don't need to see so much on this one. And anything that PowerShell Scanner catches, it's going to add. So we want to absolutely remove the unnecessary. Uh, the next big thing is going to be uh, error handling, which I'll bring in here now. Uh, the reason for this is, if it comes up with an error, we'll put that error in there say, hey, the scan is this error. But if you have error handling, like in this case, I have the super cool service that I am getting. Uh, basically, I'm going to run a command in there that says get service. And if service is not equal running, then it's just going to throw an error right there. So instead of having just the default PowerShell uh, error or the error that you might get in the scan, you're just going to have a message in there that says the super cool service is not currently running. Uh, find a cooler machine to get this to work. And actually, I will... I will test this one live uh, because apparently I'm crazy like that. So I'm just going to go scan profiles. I'm going to edit one I built earlier. And instead of type it all out new, just paste that in there. All right, so we have that new scanner in there. We're going to come in and choose, we'll say bird person on this one. We're going to scan it with PowerShell. And what, instead of the scan setup, the normal error of, hey, this failed for this, it should get the error that we defined. Uh, so this just makes it easier uh, if you're doing something where you know there's a chance it's going to fail because of a specific parameter, whether it's the wrong version of the OS or the service needs to be run in. Instead of getting uh, error, you don't really have a lot of control. You get something like this where you have a quick breakdown. You can definitely uh, troubleshoot and figure out what went wrong much faster that way. The next one that I, I like to go do a lot and this one is kind of uh, an ob obvious one, but it, just just in case. Uh, as with earlier one, we know we don't want it. When you do finally get to the area that you want, you want to make sure that you're only printing out the data that you want. So in this case, I have the get ACL for the access, super secret. There's nothing to see here. We're looking at the awesome file. Uh, I've selected object access to string because everything else in there, uh, you just don't need, like it's just going to clutter up what you want. All we want to know is who has access to the awesomeness.txt file. Uh, you could do select object expand access and it would print it out a little bit cleaner for you, but either one, either way, I'm not grabbing like who the owner of, of that file is. I'm not grabbing a whole bunch of information I don't need. I just want to grab what I'm looking for and keep it as clean as possible. Keep your database smaller and make it easier to find what you're looking for. All right, and the last one, and I don't have an example, this is just going to I'll go over and show you in our scanner again. Except for I can't do it for the application scanner. That's the wrong one. In here, I have it typed out in the script. We really recommend that you go and just have a PS1 file that you're loading to. Uh, the reasons are if you're, you can use a script editor so you have more control on, on what's working there. Uh, if you make an edit and you have multiple machines that are pulling from that file, you only have to make the change once. It's just, it's going to keep it cleaner and, e cleaner and easier to maintain if you use the file instead of a script. You can use the script, it works great. It's just, I would recommend if, it's a, if you have the option to use the PS1 file. And with those four things, uh, any script that you have built, just maybe just make a couple adjustments, add the, the nulls and, and select what you want and, and add your error handling, which hopefully we already have. I'll admit I'm terrible at it. It's, it's super important, but We'll admit when we're throwing something together, maybe it falls to the wayside. And so with this, it's probably best not to. And with that, I mean, it's going to run awesome. You're going to grab all the data you could ever want. It's going to really make this the best version of the product it can be. For PDQ.com, I'm Jordan.